Hello from Delmarva. Welcome back to Shore Billy Farmer. So we got a lot to try to get through today. It's going to be somewhat of a hectic day. We have got to get Eugene planting. He's got to finish up that 50 acres of beans. When the planter's folded up like this, it does take a while because we can only cover about uh, about eight acres an hour, really, once you count in your, your turns. I've got to get side dressing corn with the sprayer. So we got to put nitrogen on corn and part of that is going to entail, I need to be shuttled around a little bit. And I think the missus is going to help me there where I've got to jump in the tender truck. We got water still in the tanks and the spray tender. So we got to dump that water out and then got to go over to the farm, fill up with nitrogen, take that truck, drop it off over at the farm that we're going to be putting nitrogen on, which is our furthest farm away, my 610 farm. And uh, we got to drop it off there. And then I'll fill up with nitrogen in the sprayer, head out, hit a farm on the way out there. You've seen that before where we play musical fields. Project number one is going to be working on this. Eugene school bus, we just did uh, a lot of work to it. Had an electrical issue. He's got to come in. He's going to be, he bought a new idler pulley to put on here and get the air conditioners running again. But now it looks like we have sprung a leak out of a coolant hose. So it looks like the hose from the reservoir down to here. So we got to work on that first. I don't think that'll be a big deal. Putting the new idler pulley on won't be a big deal. It's just one of them things kind of gets hectic when you start changing a lot of different things you're doing in the day. Anyway, let's get to it. It's supposed to be hot today, like up around 93. And the reason we're kind of in a hurry to get this knocked out, one, we want to get the soybean in the ground quickly because we've got storms coming in the next few days. I think the beginning of next week, they're calling for some thunderstorms. So it's best to get the beans in the ground, get them germinated, either get them right at the surface or out of the surface before we get a heavy rain on it because then you run the chance of those beans not being able to pop out. And we talked about that before, how it unfurls. And that's another thing. I'm going to stop by a field today and show you what those beans do. Let's boogie. Let's get to it. I'm excited. I'm amped up. Our corn is finally turned the corner and is looking great. Now, I do all the large-scale farming. However, Miss Shorebilly, along with her parents, my in-laws, they do all the small-scale farming. This is their garden. And they have tomatoes, string beans, they have pumpkins somewhere. I think there they go. The pumpkins are over there. This is our orchard, we call it, where we've got an apple tree, a pear, or peach tree, rather. Now they got pumpkins. There's a couple different blueberry bushes in here, and then a fig tree down there. We'll be well fed this summer. And I've got, well, you've seen us plant the sweet corn. We have sweet corn over there. Look at the corn, guys. It is looking good out here. I'm excited. This will not get anything else done to it until the canopy closes in. And what I mean by the canopy is, if you look down the row, you can, see, you can still see the ground pretty easily. When the leaves begin to touch and shade everything is what we call the canopy closing. And once that closes, we put the spray tips back on those drop nozzles on the sprayer, and we spray a pre-emerge and roundup at the same time underneath the canopy down on the ground. And it does two things. One, it keeps the chemical off the plant. They say it doesn't affect the plant. However, it can slow. It doesn't adversely affect the plant, but it does slow its metabolism down for a couple days while it digests the chemical. But we would rather just try not to get any on the plant and spray directly on the ground and use the drop nozzles. So it keeps it off of the plant. And you get to spray a little bit later, because right now, if we were just gonna spray over top the top, like a lot of farmers do do it and, and are successful, if we were just going to spray over top the top, we'd have to do it now because you want that mist to be able to drift down and get onto the ground. But we'll wait till the corn gets about belly button high or so and that canopy closes in. Then we'll come along and we'll spray with our drop nozzles, cover the ground, and that takes care of our weed pressure pretty much all year long. We don't really have anything else. But you can see our fields stay pretty clean. I mean, I don't actually I don't see anything, not even so much as a sprig of grass anywhere in here so we'll do that once the canopy closes and then once the corn gets about shoulder to head high we'll come through and put on our last round of nitrogen as well feed the crop one last time 
and off she goes to the races. All right, before we really get started for the day, we've got some, the most important thing to do. Our knob fell off the radio and I've glued this knob back together once already. So we're gonna put a little dab of silicone on it. There we go. There's a reason I'm a radio technician, folks. I know how to do that. It's highly technical. I don't suggest you do the same, but yeah, silicone, it worked. So something else we did, I had some leftover seed bags from last year. We went ahead and put those bags here in the planter and changed the planter up to put on, now instead of 140,000 seeds an acre, we're doing 150,000 seeds an acre. It's getting later in the year and the plant isn't gonna have the availability to grow taller. So you gotta put more plants out there to have the same amount of potential beans. So we decided 150,000 would be a good spot for here. When we plant behind wheat in about three weeks, two and a half, three weeks, We'll probably bump that up again to somewhere around 180,000, 170, 180. Look, look at this. Oh. He caught us, run! All right, now we gotta play a lot of musical vehicles. All right, so Eugene's taking the bus back to his place, and then we gotta go back over to my farm, get the planter tractor, take it over to Eugene's. Then he's gotta bring me back here to get the New Holland so we can move the seed tender, and then we leave that there, and then he's gotta bring it back here to get the sprayer so I can take it over to his house and convert it over to putting nitrogen on, and then we gotta take the sprayer and the truck, go fill them up with nitrogen, and then he's gotta take me out to drop the truck off at my farthest field away so that way we can put nitrogen on. If you're not confused yet, I promise you, the plan will change. We'll be on to plan W or X by the time we actually finish today, and we'll be lost. And I think I already am lost, so yeah. It's, it's farming. It's, uh, it's hectic. Yeah. So we had about uh, 200 gallons of water in this tank. And because of these last few hot days, that, that water was crystal clear last week. And it was nothing but algae this morning. So went ahead and, and agitated it up really good. Sucked out what we could of it. I'm putting the hose back in there to just put another 100 gallons in. We'll suck it out and that'll be good enough. We look the planter over, everything looks good. We're getting ready to go continue our musical equipment. All right, well, the New Holland's moved. Now we got another little project we gotta do in the interim. Eugene cleaned out ditches in the spring and we still have some piles at the end of this field we gotta move. So we gotta get the loader off the trailer and get down there and move them and then go back to musical equipment. I promise this is not just a show about moving equipment around and seeing it start and run down the road. There's more to it than that, but the first part of this day is just running down the road with a bunch of different equipment. I told you it was gonna be hectic. I told you we'd be changing plans. The unintended project number, I don't know, 430 something. After we got the loader off the trailer, had to hook the trailer up, get the loader off the trailer, change the forks out to the bucket, we realize it's got a flat tire. So now we gotta put air in the tire. For some reason, that tire always has a leak. We have put slime in it, new tire, cleaned the rim, new valve stem. However, it always has a leak. And yet, another dead battery. I can see it. It's just going to be one of them days. All we've been doing is running around and it's almost noon. And we ain't got nothing planted yet. Or no nitrogen on yet. Thank the good Lord that little box is dependable. I couldn't imagine how much time we'd waste trying to get extension cords and one of the old school, you know, battery chargers, starters. That's filling up. Our wheat is getting there. I mean, it's nowhere ready to be harvested yet, but in a few weeks. And you can definitely see the issues with where our co-op spread. You can see the gap here where they didn't spread it, where it, it fell short. Basically, they had the spreader set too wide and they left gaps out. And then you see all this wheat falling down like this. This is where they over applied it in the center. So obviously something wasn't set right. And where it over applied, what happens is the plant basically grows too fast for itself. The stem 
cannot support it and it falls over. It just gets too thick and it falls over. Uh, similar to like soybeans, what we call lodging. So yeah, we're not happy with the results from the local co-op. They, they definitely didn't do us any favors on this, but there are other people we can use and that might be something we'll have to do because we can't have this. All right, so I lied yesterday when I said we were done with the land all because I forgot we had to do this little field out here in front of Eugene's chicken houses. Okay. And what we were waiting on was for Eugene or, or I, whoever could do it, uh, to jump on the to jump on the loader and move those piles from when we cleaned the ditch out this uh, early spring. So now that that's done, I'm gonna run around. It's only like an acre and a quarter, I think, here. So we're gonna run around this real quick, get it ready for planting. Then I gotta go drop the land all off in the shed because we're done with it for a while until I hook it up to pressure wash and clean it. But we don't wanna pressure wash and clean it yet because we might need it after we do wheat to get rid of any ruts or anything from last year. Because when we planted wheat, it was a little wet and I know that there's some areas that could probably be touched up. So, that's where we are. So the next time you see me, hopefully, I will be putting nitrogen on, unless something else changes, something else gets broken or messed up. It's, I told you, it's gonna be it's one of them days. I thought this was gonna be the year that I would get through the entire year with a piece of equipment and not have to work on it, which would have been phenomenal. However, we got hydraulic fluid coming out of here. Now, hopefully, I don't have time to look at it now, but hopefully it's just a loose fitting. But we're usually not that lucky. Oh well. If that's the worst thing on that piece of equipment this year, I'll take it. We're going hunting for commies. Nah, we're just shooting deer. We take that with us in the sprayer because we have deer damage permits and because they do so much damage to the field, we're allowed to shoot them. However, don't worry, we're not allowed to just let them lay or maim them. You have to collect them. You have to eat them, donate them, or properly compost them. You cannot just let them lay in the field. So don't worry, we do it as humane as can be. But the fact is deer are running rampant in this area because of the amount of development, deer are running rampant in this area and they've been pushed further and further into the farmland to where we used to have maybe one or two deer a night on a piece of ground. Now you've got 30 or 40 and they decimate crops, so we've got to take care of them. See all the deer tracks? Now I'm surprised there's really not as much deer damage as I was expecting. Now there is a lot of feeding, but they haven't actually destroyed the plant. Now I'll show you what I mean. If you look, if you were to look across this, you see how there's not many leaves sticking out in the row? But then when you look down here, further away from the wood line, you see there's a lot more leaf coming out into the row versus what you see here. And what they've done is they do this. They cut the leaf right off and they trim them. Almost looks like a, almost looks like a lawnmower has come through here. Now that's all fine if they just stay doing this. It might hurt our yield a little bit, but it won't keep the plant from producing a viable ear. But when they do this, See where they ate the center right out? When they eat the center out of the corn plant, that is essentially its heart. And when they do that and they come down on top and they eat the whole thing, that plant's not likely gonna create an ear. So the stalk will grow, we'll get leaves off of it, and it'll look like a viable plant, but then when you come up to it and look at it, there's not gonna be an ear on it. So that's why we, we participate in the deer damage program that Maryland allows us to. And really the whole field is pretty clean. No weeds or anything in it, except for right here where the deer have been coming in and out, in and out. And between them eating weeds and weed seeds and then crapping it out on the ground and it germinates. And then also on top of it, them stirring up the soil as they walk around it. You can see you start getting grass in here. Uh, and that, this is really the only place I've got any kind of weed pressure on this farm is just this area right along this woodland here. So. It's a two-fold thing. You lose yield, but then you also are dealing with weeds like this. Now, when we come back and spray here in a couple weeks, this will all, I mean, we'll smoke this. It'll, it'll, it'll be gone. But it's still frustrating to see all your hard work and have animals come in and tear it up. All right, back to spraying.
pretty neat where I had to go back over where I've already done, and you can plainly see where we dribbled the nitrogen. Uh, I just wanted to show you that. I thought it was pretty cool. But we're in the last field, uh, about six acres left. And when everything runs right, this is one of the most satisfying jobs I think there is on the farm. You get to see your crop, get to look at its, you know, how healthy it is, how it's doing, dreams of big money. And then usually the inevitable hits and something goes wrong, but you can enjoy this time while you got it. Well, that's gonna do it for us today. That is a long day on Delmarva, done and gone. But we got a lot done. And Eugene's just about done planting beans over on his farm. We got all the equipment moved around, got his bus going, got nitrogen on, got everything back to the farm. That's it, finito, finished, done. Guys, if you don't mind, please hit that like button, subscribe and share with all your friends. Our channel is growing by leaps and bounds and I'll be honest, I'm really enjoying engaging with you guys and getting discussions going pro and against farming. And we've had a couple that, you know, didn't like what we were doing, but you know, it's something that needs to get done and we're still gonna try to educate. So anyway, with that, thank you all for watching and goodbye from Dalmarva. Shorebelly Farmer, out. The only one thing I didn't get to do, I didn't get to defend America today. Me and my buddy didn't see any commies. That's all right. They're out there, we'll find them. Oh, I don't know if you can see them. I don't know if you can see them, but they're over there. And they're out there. Here, commie, commie, commie. Here, commie, commie. I, I mean, deer. Here, deer.